Hello and welcome to News Laundry Interviews. Uh, over the last few months, there has been uh, damning reporting and revelations into how Facebook operates and really the real world harm it causes. Uh, and of all the issues that have come into light from impact on teen health to effects on our democracy, one thing has really stuck out. Uh, it is how Facebook is not only how Facebook is quite well aware of the issues that plague the platform, but how often it is willing to compromise safety for growth. Now, a lot of this has been possible because of the work and courage of Facebook whistleblowers. Uh, so I'm very happy uh, to have uh, Sophie Zhang with us today. Uh, Sophie worked with Facebook as a data scientist until September last year. Uh, where she worked on fake engagement and accounts that often lead to election interference. Early this year, Sophie uh, wrote a series of articles in Guardian where she really disclosed how Facebook turns a blind eye to fake engagement. And there were a lot of uh, references and mentions to India also. So a lot of that we'll be discussing. And of course, what has uh, Facebook really been up to as far as the reports and revelations are concerned in the last one year. So uh, thank you so much, Sophie, for taking out the time and speaking with us and really the courage for speaking out. Absolutely, and thank you. It's a pleasure to speak with yourself and the Indian people. Great. Okay, so Sophie, just for uh, context, could you tell our viewers first, uh, what did you do at Facebook and the work that led uh, to that Guardian piece that you wrote earlier this year? So at Facebook, I was a data scientist, which meant that I looked at numbers, figured out what they meant, and explained them to people. I was very low level. I was one level above a new hire straight out of college. And, to the, and, and from the start, I was on what was called the fake engagement team. Technically, the name has changed since, but I'm referring it to, it to it as fake engagement, just as I'm referring to Facebook as Facebook, even though it is now meta. And so it's, and so it's important to remember that all the work that, you ha that has been written about me in the news, that, that, that has made it about its way into the press about myself, all of this is work that I was doing in my spare time. It was officially in my area, but in practice, not work that I was expected to do. Because, because when it comes to fake engagement, this is, when I say fake, this refers to accounts that are fake, pre pretending to be people who do not exist. It refers to accounts that are inauthentic, that are hacked. You are a real person, but if I hack into your Facebook account and take it over and I control it, I, this account is not inauthentic. Or, and it refers to self-compromised accounts. If you give me your credentials and I do bad things with your account, you're a real person and you still have access, but I'm the one doing bad things. I'm not you. And by engagement, I mean likes, comments, shares, new fans, etc. And so most people, when they hear about this, they immediately think about IT cells, perhaps foreign interference, like, like Russia in the United States. But the thing to remember is that most people are not politicians, and the vast majority of activity on Facebook is not about politics. And so most inauthentic activity, they're not IT cells, they're not anything sophisticated. These the ordinary people, ordinary Indians who go on social media, they make a post, they see my post got received two likes. My friend made a post, it received 200 likes. Why is my friend 100 times better than me? I know how to fix this. I will go on Google, I will search for get Facebook likes and this will clearly solve my problem for me. And, and in contrast to the activity that I worked on with, regarding politicians, regarding, regarding more sophisticated use of political spaces to, to manipulate citizenry, this was work that I was doing in my spare time that was not part of my actual jo job. I'm going to finish with an analogy. Suppose that tomorrow in Delhi, the, the Delhi police chief hires a new policewoman and they tell this policewoman, your job is to deal with theft and robberies in Delhi. And what they mean is this policewoman should stop shoplifting and pickpocketing and purse snatching and that sort of thing. And this policewoman does all of this. But also in her spare time, she works with RNAW or IB or whoever to track down a network of PRC ransomware people who are, who are hacking into Indian hospitals in Delhi to ransom them and steal their money. This is technically what she was ordered to do. But it's certainly not what she was expected to do, and it's certainly very much above her pay grade. And it would be very unusual if she were doing this. And I right. hope that right. makes sense. So, uh, Sophie, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm understanding that the 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 scope or the mandate really was to look into inauthentic activity or fake engagement, and within that 
polit politic or political content was just a small part of it, right? But it's just that that's the latter part was something that you really ended up working a lot in your spare time. It was something that was officially in the area I was asked to work on, but unofficially very much above my pay grade. And there were other, and there were other much more trained and specialist people working on the problem. Correct, correct. And uh, could you also tell our viewers, because I think some of our viewers might not have read the Guardian piece and what has followed, uh, in your work and in your research and analysis, where all did India come in and what were the, as far as inauthentic or fake engagement is concerned, where all did you see India being mentioned or highlighted? Yeah, and just to be clear, I was not working on any particular country. I was working throughout the entire world. I, and I was looking at all activity on Facebook and I was looking for certain suspicious patterns of behavior worldwide. Uh, and India was just one of many of very many countries yeah. that I worked on. Of course, I found results in India because India is a large country. <laughs> and yeah. and and I also want to distinguish between multiple types of inauthentic behavior. And what what I mean is that people often conflate and confuse scripted activity uh, uh, that is activity done by a computer script automatically where there, there's no real person behind it with activity done by, by real people sitting behind desks, IT cells where people are paid to do activity all day. And right. to the average day person, these may sound very similar, but they're quite different in terms of sophistication, scope, and resources needed. If News Laundry needed to replace, decided to replace a reporter with a computer script tomorrow, that computer script would be able to write a very large amount of articles that would have absolutely no readers because it would be garbage. And this is why you still have a job. And because, of course, computer scripts are not very smart and people have not, com and if you had a computer script that could pass the Turing test, you would be making trillions in Silicon Valley, not shopping it off to an Indian political party or something. But they are able to do things in very large volumes, but very bad at doing it, doing it in smart ways. And so, and and so, what I'm the activity that I was focusing on my in, in my spare time was this type of more sophisticated, lower volume, but smarter activity done by real humans sitting behind desks. And I just want to clarify that I'm speaking speaking specifically about this. Correct. And so India, with regards to in, in, inauthentic activity, I discovered several networks in, in India in the fall of 2019. I raised them further in November of 2019. It, it, it took an additional month for the, for, for, and uh, more pressure for them to get attention in December of 2019. And this may sound like a long time to listeners, but it was very low compared to some of the other responses that I got. When I, when I found activity in, say, Honduras, it took, I had caught the government of Honduras red-handed, and it took almost a year for Facebook to act. But in, in Azerbaijan, I caught the government red-handed again, and it took more than a year for Facebook to act. And so to act in the months, it's quite quickly as far as Facebook goes. Yeah. Because face India is of course quite important to Facebook, but but of course the focus that face that that Facebook places on India isn't the same as what the Indian pe people would prefer. I think because in in India, uh, in, in, I initially raised three separate networks of inauthentic activity. They were they were eventually five, and uh, and and of these five networks, two were supporting the INC, two were supporting the BJP, one was supporting the app, and so this was. A very non-partisan seduction, I would say, but there were multiple yes, parties. yes, and, and and from the start, but at the start there were only three, and and then four. But anyways, when I raised them in December, it did not take very long for people to decide. Yes, this is bad. We should take them down, and they took down all but one of the networks. But but they stopped on the last one because suddenly at that point we realized that one of the pro BJP networks was directly connected to a city member of the Lok Sabha, that this, that this MP was someone with access to their, his personal Facebook account, but was, 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 was running this, this, this small network of fake accounts. Apparently this individual had a very interesting personal hobby. Well, and, and, and so as soon as that discovery happened, I, I, could, I could not get an answer 
from Facebook on what was should be done with the fake accounts. I repeatedly pushed for an answer. I said, okay, the, the most obvious solution would be to take down the fake accounts and leave the MP alone. That would be the easiest to get done. And so I support this because I know it would be extraordinarily difficult for Facebook to take any action against an MP. And you would think that the first result would be obvious except no one responded. And they kept bringing it up and still no one responded. And eventually, eventually, by January, I had discovered a separate pro-app network of fake accounts that were acting to manipulate discourse in the run-up to the 2020 Dundee elections, which were in Fe on February 8, 2020. And so when I got Facebook's attention on this pro-app network, I would repeatedly say, well, if, well, now that we're focused on this, we should also act on this pro-BJP network. Otherwise, it would be very easy for other people to allege that we were biased, that we take down an app IT cell, but we leave a BJP IT cell alone. And this argument was not very successful, but it eventually became a self-fulfilling prophecy because I am making that argument right now. Correct, correct. No, I understand. So, so what I understand is, A, not only they were unwilling to take action, if they were willing, they also wanted to take action across the political spectrum, so that just from a PR or from a optic standpoint, it doesn't look like a crackdown on a network I mean, of a political party. That was the argument that I used. It was not successful, to correct. be clear. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, never, I, I never got a straight answer. And, and because of that, Facebook has retained what you could call implausible deniability. It, they could, they, I mean, they've changed the story a number of times on this case. Yeah, and you can see, and you can see, I, I believe a total of three or four times. It, it, they, eventually, they gave it up and have stopped making specific comment on this case and simply given, given, given a general denial because they apparently still cannot get their stories straight. Correct. And uh, the content of these networks, Sophie, was it primarily English or there were like under the within these networks, you had content from like other languages as well? I do not remember the exact selection, but there were a number of, but they were, there Correct. was at least English and Hindi. Correct. Correct. But, like I, I relied on Google Translate, of course, for the Hindi. Correct. No, I no, don't reason... remember. Yeah. I don't remember the pre the precise makeup and it, and, 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 ju and just to be, and just to be, and just to be clear, <laughs> Look, you don't need to, um, just for context, you don't need to understand the content of what's being said to know that it's a fake account. The content is only important for context, just in the same way that if someone stuffs, stuffs a bandage box with fake bandits, you don't need to know who they voted for to know that, that the bandits are fake. Got it, got it. No, no, the reason why I was asking about the language, wait, because one of the things that we now understand and know uh, uh, from the documents that have been uh, submitted by Francis Hogan is that Facebook for the longest time did lack classifiers in languages like Bengali and Hindi, and that did lead to certain misinformation. I know you didn't work on misinformation, but yeah. just uh, just as someone who's, who's worked on fake engagement and overall, how much do you think is the lack of language classifier maybe responsible for Facebook not acting? Or do you think it is really related? It has, to it is, I, this is not related. Language content classifiers are necessary for content-based moderation, but they are not necessary at all for behavioral-based moderation, which does not care about what the content is. You don't need, you, you don't need, I, I, did, I was able to find activity in so many countries where, whose languages I did not speak and whose political contexts I did not understand because you do not need to know what people are saying. You just need to be able to identify is an account fake or not. Got it, got it. So and, uh, and, and so these are and so for content validations, this can make this can make sense. In in some cases, in, in occasional cases, this has this in occasional cases when people want to know what 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 the context of what is being said, it 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 occasionally comes up. In Azerbaijan, for instance, when I was pushing for a takedown, there was literally no one who spoke Azeri available to to find and but and, and so that was the, and so that was more difficult but yeah, but facebook certainly had people who spoke hindi that was not a constraint correct and so, so to, to essentially to crack down on fake engagement or break fake profiles you don't need like language uh, language classifier or module classifier in like as many languages as possible that, that, that is correct these are correct. unrelated matters Okay, so I don't know if you had a, a chance to look at Sophie, but just yesterday BBC reported of how there is there was a very sophisticated uh, network of profiles across social media platforms, 
uh, claiming to be uh, Sikh profiles. And essentially, these profiles were spreading misinformation or they were actively sort of uh, pushing divisive content. I see. So, yeah. so that really that that really under, underlines, and of course, in India, we know. I think we're quite. We might not be aware of how IT cell of political parties operate, but I think uh, there is a basic understanding that each political party has their own IT cell, which they use to sort of push narratives or push certain agenda. So, and absolutely, and so a as someone who has worked on fake engagement, is the problem of IT cell. Uh, unique to India only, or have you seen in other countries also in your work? And B, how much do you think the fake engagement problem is aggravated or caused by these IT sophisticated IT cell networks? So the so the IT cell problem is not unique to India in the sense that there are other governments, there are other countries whose governments feel the need to engage to to to, to engage in repressive social media practices. In China, for in the People's Republic of China, for instance, it's it, there's there's a term called the Wu Maodong, which translates as the Fifty Cent Party, uh, as a joking reference to how much tro internet trolls are supposedly paid per post that they make. Oh, okay. And, and of course, I caught the governments of Honduras and Azerbaijan red-handed. And in those cases, those were the national governments or the president in the case of Honduras that were pers that were running IT cells that essentially. And so this is and so this is not something that is unique to India. What is you? I mean, what is more unique to India is the fact that this has been this has been done in a widespread way in in. And of in in a democracy in a democratic nation across the political spectrum, and it's effectively normalized. I mean, what I would say it's ongoing in India is essentially an IT cells arms race in which each political party cannot afford to disarm, otherwise they would lose an advantage to their opponents. And this arms race is no more beneficial for the ordinary Indians than the US-Soviet nuclear arms race for the people of the world, but it will continue unabated until something happens to stop it. Because this sort of IT saw activity, I mean, when you can, democracy cannot function when people cannot trust the voices of what is being said and heard. In this, in the same way that stuffing ballot boxes with inauthentic votes undermines the right of vote, drowns out the individual votes with fraudulent ones. IT starts strung out real voices with fraudulent voices, and the voice of the ordinary Indian cannot be heard if no, if, uh, or understood. And so ultimately, I think this is a significant risk to Indian democracy that India needs to grapple with, because it is true that this occurs in other countries, but I certainly believe that the People's Republic of China should not serve as a model for Indian governance. And I hope that the Indian Correct. people would agree with me on that. Correct. Yes. And, you know, just from a technical standpoint, how easy or complex do you think it is uh, for platforms to crack down on these like IT cell networks? Like, uh, like, is it so that, like, say, the likes of Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, they want to crack down on all these IT cell networks? What will it What will it take, like, uh, from from a tech standpoint? It's hard for me to say because this is certainly a difficult problem. It, it, there is a bit of an arms race between between the IT cells and the platforms as well. Um, but but and that's why I have focused on case focused instead of cases in which I found things and they were not acted on because you can ask a question is the police good enough at catching the criminals but if you have a case in which police were about to arrest criminals and then they backed off because the criminal they found the criminals were sponsored by a by a member of the Lodak Sabha. That is a question. That is an issue that has absolutely nothing to do with how good other police get crushing criminals. It is a question of political interference and are, and are, and are the police truly independent? Are they willing to act? And so, and so, I don't I don't claim that Facebook could be perfect and and it, and, and it could be cracked down on everything. All I claim is that it could certainly be better. Correct. Correct. No, because I'm I'm also asking because uh, from from the way I look at it, the issue is also exacerbated by the fact that a lot of these IT cell networks do run ads on these platforms. So in a way, a lot of these companies, and especially if you look at in 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 India, political parties are among the top uh, uh, ad uh, buyers across Facebook and other 
other platforms. So in a way, Facebook or other uh, platforms are also benefiting from these IT cell networks because more networks, there are more narratives, more misinformation, more fake engagement that is being pushed. Essentially, these companies are also making money through these IT cell networks. I don't think that's a significant motivation or consideration for the for for the companies because it, it is true that IT cells can run ads and 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 and, and, ram, and create misinformation that causes activity. But it's important to remember that this is a tiny fraction of activity compared to, to compared to the two billion users on Facebook and 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 the and the myriad of activity that 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 occurs on day to day. A political activity on, India, on, on Facebook in India is dominated by ordinary Indians, and the, and the number of IT cell users make up a tiny fraction compared to the overall amount of users. It, as to the reasons why Facebook is reluctant to act, I would point rather to political pressure and and the general lack of, and and the general lack of motivation of the company to fit, to, 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 to 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 police its own system. We don't expect Philip Morris tobacco to fix tobacco addiction, to, 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 to reimburse the Indian government every time a citizen needs to be treated for lung cancer. We don't expect ExxonMobil to fix climate change. We don't expect Unium Carbide to reimburse the people of Bhopal who they poison to death even not the, the good old Cameco. The fact that we have such high expectations of Facebook to police its own system is perhaps a statement on the public relations that it enjoys. Correct. Okay. So, you know, just looking, like I said, just looking at the last few months, there has been so many, so, so much scrutiny and stories into how Facebook works. And like, thanks to you and Francis Hogan, we understand a lot better as compared to say like two years before. Uh, and we know from a fact like that Facebook does respond to media attention or PR so much so that they often prioritize closing issues or fixing issues, depending on what is going to get covered in media or what will they get bad press for so as 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 someone who is a whistleblower how positive you are that this will change things around as to how social media works especially like things at facebook i'm going to interject with a comment before answering that question because it's true that Facebook responds to, to media and PR retention as its primary motive for, 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 why, for why it cares about these problems. I mean, to the extent that Facebook cares about Indian democracy, it's because media pressure and also because Mark is human and needs, needs to sleep at night. Mm. But, 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 this has, but this has a special intersection with inauthenticity because, and this is not true for other areas like misinformation or hate speech or et cetera, because in those cases, the amount of, uh, the amount of attention misinformation or hate speech gets that is to first approximation proportional to how bad it actually is. But the purpose of, mis of inauthenticity of fake accounts is to not be seen. And the better you are at not being seen, the fewer people will actually see you. I'm going to use an analogy. If an ordinary Indian person goes out and decides, I'm going to look for PRC spies, they will not find any. And this is not to say that there aren't any in India. Rather, it's that PRC spies are good at hiding and pretending to be normal people. And if an ordinary Indian person could find them, that spy would probably, would probably be executed for incompetence or something. And so instead, this ordinary Indian would find, regu would find regular people who behave a bit odd they would find people who have to celebrate the American holiday of Halloween and are dressed up. Or perhaps they will, target, they will suspect the, the Chinese Indian community who are loyal to India. But, and this is why the Indian government relies, re, re, relies on the intelligence bureau, the RNDW. They do not rely on reports from ordinary Indians because no matter how good the reports get and the responses to them, they, they, would never, they would never suffice on their own. And they hope this makes sense. And, and, and that is the fundamental issue faced by inauthenticity of, from IT cells and, and, and the like, because the better something is at hiding, the, the less attention it will get and the more effective it will actually be. And so, and so the amount of attention an IT cell receives and the amount of, uh, is inversely proportional to how good it actually is. Because if you are a spy who everyone suspects is a spy, you're a really terrible spy. Unless your name is James Bond, I don't, James Bond, I don't know how he does it. And so that causes a situation in which Facebook focuses on what gets media attention, but what gets media attention is not the same as what's actually bad. 
In the in the United States and in the United Kingdom, I worked on two cases in which in which the, the media in the in the UK and the US were very worried about activity that they believed was inauthentic, perhaps foreign and Russian. And I was on these investigations. And Facebook spent there was a lot of Facebook resources on it. There were a lot of people on the, the investigations. And in both cases, these turned out to be actual Britons and Americans who believed that it would be extremely funny to pretend to be badly disguised Russians. It would be funny if it went so sad. And this is a good illustration of the way Facebook focuses on what gets attention, but what gets attention isn't the same as what's bad in this specific area. Mm -hmm. Imagine a world in which cigarettes still gave people cancer, but only the cigarette companies knew it. Or if the bulk power chemical disaster happened, but only but only Union Carbide knew who was responsible, no one else did, and only Union Carbide had any chance of knowing who was responsible. In that world, I think it would be extremely important for someone from within the companies to come forward. And that's precisely what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. But as to whether this solution is fixed, it cannot be fixed without more inf without more information and solving the information gap. When I when I spoke to the to the British Parliament uh, 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 a month or two ago, when I testified to them, I, I gave two concrete suggestions on how to address it. The first is to have trusted governments who have no history of this activity conduct red team style penetration tests. That is, for instance, the British government can, in a controlled fashion, set up, an IT, set up IT cells on social media and then create reports. We set up 10 IT cells on Reddit, Reddit caught zero. We set up one, 10 on Twitter, Twitter caught one. We set up 10 on Facebook, Facebook caught two. They're all awful, but Twitter, but Facebook is the least awful. And this is a hypothetical example, of course. And the same approach could be used for, for instance, terrorist content, for, for, for misinformation, for hate speech, etc. Because right now, even the companies don't know how much that they are, they are not catching. In the same way that if you ask the Indian government how many Chinese spies have we not have we do have we not caught, the, the Indian government will not tell, be able to tell you that. Okay. Uh and as to your actual question of how optimistic am I on the general problem of Facebook and um, whether change will happen, I think that I mean at the end of the day, that's not up to myself. That's up to the that's up to people like you, you and other reporters and the Indian people who are listening. Mm -hmm. If the Indian people act in concert, there's almost nothing that they can't do. They they proved they proved that they could defy the world's greatest empire, but when they gained independence from Britain. But I'm just a single person. How, how much influence I have is how, depends on how many people act in concert behind me. And if Indian and if Indian people, if India wants change, then they should speak to the members of the Dark Sabha. Then they should push for for this, and they, uh, because because India deserves better than, than the system where each party sets up IT cells to deceive and manipulate them. Now, of course, the memo that you wrote uh, after you exited from Facebook that sort of really went viral, and I think I was remember uh, I was reading one of your uh, a text interview somewhere. You you did sort of talk about that how uh, a lot of this you hold media also responsible because the way media covered the memo vis a vis the way media highlighted your disclosures in the Guardian story. There was a stark difference. Uh, so, you know, as a whistleblower, because it takes a lot, it takes a lot of uh, 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 really a lot of courage, it takes a lot of, uh, it, it really takes a toll on your health, on your career also in a way, and, and we'll come back to that. But how, what is the kind of role do you see media in, in these revelations? And as someone who is a whistleblower, how would you say how, I don't want to use the word judge. But how do you look back as to how media has covered the subject? I don't want I don't want to judge media. Like at the end of the day, so social media has created a world in which what gets attention is it, it, it's it's the sensational as opposed to the pedestrian. It's it's and nuance is ignored in in favor of simplicity. And this is the road the social media has forged, a road in, and many have debated the consequences like misinformation, hate speech, etc. At the end of the day, what goes, what goes viral t tends to be what fades into the public zeitgeist of, uh, uh, of something that can be reduced into a simplified soundbite that, that can attract people's attention and, and be emotionally charged.
I don't blame media for playing into that world built by social media. I don't think it should be any surprise when I say that the criticisms of, so, of social media that gain attention are also ones that fit into assumption, the, 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 the public assumptions are also ones that are sensational and perhaps not the most accurate. Because, because unfortunately, things can easily be taken out of context in the rush to publish. You mentioned my memo, for instance, I mean, that was written entirely for an, an internal Facebook audience. I certainly did not expect it to leak and or go viral, and that was frankly my mistake. I'm going to use a specific example of, of how it was played in the Indian press uh, as an illustration of my of my critiques. And so, in in, in my memo, I I discuss I discuss the work that I did in, in the lead up to the 2020 Delhi elections. The actual context of why I was mentioning this is that I was discussing in my memo the, per, the, per, the, per, the personal consequences and sacrifices I had to make. And I used that as an example because I was sick at the time, but I needed to work regardless to, because there was no one else willing to step up to protect Indian democracy. And to be clear, the company did not ask me to make this sacrifice. I did so on my own. And anyways, intending this only for an internal audience, I use the word actors for to describe people acting to do something. For instance, the phrase "bad actors." And so, uh, and and so, this sentence was leaked to the press without context. And I believe it. Uh, I, I believe this it was. So I think Times right. now ran a heading that Bollywood actors are involved. In yes, that. yes, something like that. They said I caught Bollywood red-handed, right. and. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry at that point, <laughs> because it's very easy for because in the flurry to publish it, it to to draw the new to draw the latest scoop, it, it, it had not it, news outlets they have an incentive to to make the most sensational and exaggeratory headlines, and because this is ultimately the world in which they operate, and. When a few people make make a make some make a mistake, then that's something that you could ask them to change. But when everyone makes that, when everyone faces a problem, then that's a, not a problem of individuals. That's a problem of of society and the ecosystem. And and so I don't and so I don't I try not to single out individual news outlets or the like because mm -hmm. ultimately all of us are ad adapting to the world that social media has made. No. Uh, I think we 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 have a new data protection uh, 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 bill that is being discussed in the parliament. I think just yesterday it was reported uh, that the joint uh, parliamentary committee, the JPC, is also looking at some regulatory mechanism for uh, social media or intermediary platforms. Uh, I know you've talked about that you've been in touch uh, or you've spoken with Shashi Tharoor, who heads the. Uh, uh, standing I have spoken with his office. Yes. Correct, correct. So, uh, of course, uh, for my first question is, have you been asked to testify? Has anyone reached out to you from the Indian government? And second is, if someone does reach out to you, like what exactly uh, would you say needs to be done as far as Facebook and uh, social media is concerned in India? It's it's public that it's public that I've been in communication with the office of Shastri Saru and that the and that he, he he and the committee on information technology have asked for the speaker's permission for myself to testify to them, which I understand is mandatory for any overseas speaker who might, who who would be potentially asked to testify. I am obviously not an expert on Lok Sabha proceedings. This is only this is what I have been told. I I, I mean. I still, I mean, I have not received an official answer regard, regarding that. I mean, th that, that is public information. I mean, if it were announced, if it were announced that we were going to testify, you would have known, you would have known by now. And if they asked me to testify, I, 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 would, I would do so. I have publicly offered on multiple occasions in the past half year to do so. I mean, I have testified before the European Parliament a year ago. I've testified before the British Parliament a month ago. I've testified before the California State Senate a, a week or two ago, maybe two, maybe three weeks at this point. I don't remember. Correct. What what has your how has your experience been in like speaking with or just being in touch with lawmakers and policymakers? I think we have come a long way uh, from where uh, uh, 
uh, like so for example i remember when there was a senate hearing uh, uh, politicians in us asked zuckerberg how how the, how does the platform make money and he said one run ads so have you seen like like have you seen any improvement or differences as far as understanding within the lawmakers and policy makers are concerned as to how do these platforms work and like what is the kind of real world harm it causes with regards to lawmakers in the united states i have not testified to the us to the to to the to the us congress but i mean from my from my, from my viewing as a pub, as a member of the public of the testimony i i can the the, the questions have gotten more intelligent and informed which I think is a statement on increasing levels of priority paid to this area, because certainly Senator Orrin Hatchett's staff could have told him how Facebook made money, but he did not ask them that question beforehand, or he did not prior, or he did not remember it. It was not an area of issue knowledge that he felt needed to be remembered. Mm-hmm. And this, I'm I'm not aware enough with the political contexts in Britain, in Europe, in the in India, etc. To, to draw conclusions there. I've given my adv- I've given advice on um, uh, on upcoming bills in Britain and in and in Europe, and lawmakers can decide whether to take it up as they wish. I I haven't I'm not familiar with the India Data Protection Bill. I mean, if if I'm if I'm asked to testify about it, obviously I would read it in full beforehand. I think the British Parliament was actually a bit surprised that they read their bill in full. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it seemed a bit silly to me. I mean, if I'm if I'm asked to testify before the British Parliament or the locks of power, or it's actually about a bill, I feel like it's only polite to read it first. <laughs> but I mean, I don't do this all the time. Maybe people right. who do it know better than me. So uh, I think we. Would, we we establish now and we understand how often negative media or pr does dictate facebook's policy making and you know if you look at the reporting that has happened most of it has happened uh, in in west or in us for that matter let's so for example if you take uh, one of the stories that wall street journal did on how instagram affects uh, health of teenage girls now that specific research was done uh primarily uh, only on um, teens from us and uk and i think that is usually the case both in terms of disclosure and also of media attention even in india a lot of reporting that has come into how facebook's policy making has been impacted uh, by political consequences that was also broken by wall street journal so do you think in a way the fact that you know countries outside us uk and 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 then the so called west there is so little scrutiny and query or reporting into facebook that really works as a incent that really incentivizes facebook to not give more attention to fixing it especially when it comes to uh, issues that impact election or democracy in in countries outside us uk i would split this into two separate two multiple areas the first is that I mean, Indian outlets have reported on on Facebook in in the country. For instance, when the Wall Street Journal expose came, came out, I mean that was picked up by a number of Indian outlets, and it eventually led to the resignation of Anki Das. The question that I would ask there is why the whistleblower in question felt the need to give it to a Wall Street Journal reporter rather than an Indian outlet. And they think, and they think ultimately that's the question of trust by Indians in in, in the local media, and in in their independence and their willingness to report in depth a difficult story, a difficult and complicated story. The, because I mean, certainly that received attention in, in India. I mean, my revelations have received have received attention in India as well. The, but 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 in, but of course I didn't. But but of course I chose to go forward with 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 the Guardian because my work was global and India was only a subset of it. But mm-hmm. in the case of the whistleblower who came forward regarding Anki's own bias and 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 and, and Facebook's reported bias towards the BJP, I I think that to be. It would be useful for Indian journalists to discuss among themselves why that whistleblower, who was likely Indian, chose to go to a US, US outlet rather than one in their native country. A separate question is, is, is merely how, how does Facebook prioritize areas? Because Facebook does, does, does prioritize India in a way that it does not prioritize countries like Honduras or Azerbaijan. India is the world's most populous nation. 
but but to a, but to a, but to a significant extent that facebook is more I, I think that attention works the other way around also because that facebook cares so much about india it is more concerned about pissing off the indian government or the authorities right? so it, i think it, it works the other way around absolutely also. and i've made this comment publicly before like when I caught the government of, of, of Azerbaijan red-handed, it took more than a year for Facebook to act. If I, if, and, I, and I want to be clear, this is a hypothetical, it did not happen. If I caught Narendra Modi, and it, again, hypothetical did not happen, my guess is that I would have gotten an answer from Facebook the next day within 24 hours. And the answer would have been, no, we can't act on this, or no, we have to think about this and figure out some way to, to act cleverly, or no, or something, or something like, or ignore this and pretend you never found this, or something like that. Because it's a bit of a perverse effect, because there's actually more independence by Facebook in countries that are cared less about, because they receive less attention. Facebook it was able to essentially make enemies of two world governments, I might say so. And they were correct to do so, but that was only possible because these were small, broad governments with, with little interfere, with little power. And in in contrast, it, its reluctance to do so, to act independently of the government in India, my guess is that they believe most likely correctly that the government still enjoys the support of the majority of Indians. When Facebook deplatformed the, gov the military government of Myanmar, which is a populous nation, though certainly not on the scale of India, they did not, they did not need to fear that, me that the Myanmarese people would reject the platform en masse. But that it's but that it's certainly it's certainly a risk faced if they take action against the Indian government. In addition, the Indian government has I understand leveled threats of arresting employees against and and so Facebook employees within the companies are effectively hostage to the government to demands by the government. This is a tool that has also been used by countries such as the Russian Federation to, to, to pressure the social media companies into removing opposition posts. And so ultimately, as to where we go forward, I wouldn't characterize this as a lack of news attention. I would characterize this as, as generally more just, I would say that Facebook feels that's public support for, for, for policing, uh, these sorts of policing actions in countries such as India compared to the United States. Because if Facebook takes down a BJP IT sale and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the BJP denounces Facebook in response, how will the Indian people react? Perhaps many of them will believe this is another example of Western imperialism, perhaps, yeah. etc. And so they, and because this is, has unfortunately became normalized to an extent that is not the case in the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. I mean, certainly they were certainly Facebook faced pressure from the U.S. government, but 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 nevertheless, they took down a right a right wing conservative essentially IT cell in the United States in the lead up to the US 2020 election. Correct. I think also in authoritarian governments, uh, platforms like Facebook are more likely to face flag from the government if they do the right thing instead of the other way wrong. Uh, because a lot of these, uh, a lot of these cases involve uh, resources and investment of political parties. Uh, lastly, Sophie, how has the last uh, one year been for you? How like has it been tiring? And I'm asking this because I know speaking out is not easy. And like anyone who has any interest as to what these platforms are up to, uh, they should be thankful uh, uh, to whistleblowers like like you. Uh, because it, it does have ramification uh, on your career and financially. So just the, how the last year has it been? And what is the kind of thinking that that sort of went into? Because I, 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 I can imagine that you saw this coming, that this, this will blow up, uh, that you will have to leave the company if you uh, carry forward the path. So what was really your thinking uh, before, for example, before you wrote the memo? And how has the last one year been? It's hard, it's hard to, to pin an exact moment. In stories, there's some dramatic turning point in which the protagonist suddenly decides how, how everything will happen. And then maybe there's a montage of things that will happen in Bollywood. It doesn't work you that should, way. In you should make one because so that when they make a film where they feature all no. the people, <laughs> the person who plays, you can have that turning point. Uh, no, this does not <laughs> exist in real life. I mean, for me, I think this. 
I, for me, I think that's it, for me, I think this is a journey that started not not any time, not, not any time, not any time near my departure, but rather when I started taking on this actual responsibility and working in, in my spare time to police the world in the middle in the middle of 2018. And less than half a year after I joined the company, that the fact that I felt the need to do this extra work was reflective of the fact that no one was doing it in the first place. And it certainly was not a secret within the company that I was doing it. I mean, I I I, I, I spoke to everyone up and to and including uh, Vice President Guy Rosen, who is the Facebook Vice President of Integrity on the matter, and they wanted to know how unusual this was because I was extraordinarily low level, like. It would be it would be like an army sergeant briefing Vice President Kamala Harris on something in the United States. It would never happen, and if it did, it would be a reflection of something extraordinarily unusual that this army sergeant was the only one who was an expert on the matter, and that there was no one higher up to give the briefing. And th and throughout, I, I think Facebook was I, I think Facebook was happy to have my work at first. They were effectively getting two people's work out of me, but slowly and they became more and more frustrated with the fact that I was doing it and were never willing to make changes. And so the and so in retrospect, I think I, I, th I think it was pretty clear that I was heading towards this from the start. I mean I I mean I start I mean I, I mean I mean and there, there were multiple moments in which I considered quitting and coming forward, but but eventually, but because of the fact that there would be no one to replace me, that I was doing all of this in my spare time and my work would not be continued if I left, I felt the need to stay. And eventually, when I left, it was because Facebook had fired me, and they had also turned down an offer from myself to 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 work and paid as a volunteer through the U.S. elections, which I felt it was important for me to offer. It's been an exhausting. It's been an exhausting few years. I stay home and pet my cats. They are very good cats. I don't know why anyone would likes public attention. I don't know why anyone would want to be a journalist or a politician. But I mean, some people like to do it. For me, press attention. It's not something that I want, but I put up with it because it's important. In the same way that most people do not want to wake up at seven seven a.m. to go into the office, but most people still do it anyways. Yeah, and it's I don't, I don't know. I have I have plenty I have plenty of savings. Mm -hmm. Facebook paid me too much. <laughs> you could you could technically argue and that I'm therefore, sure I'm sure they would have paid you a lot more had you kept kept your mouth shut. Yeah, yes, I I, w I was earning the equivalent of two hundred of, of two hundred thousand US dollars each year. Yeah. <laughs> It's um, I was and I was very and I was and I was not paid very much compared to other, fa other Facebook employees. The, I mean, the, I mean, there's a reason that the careers are so lucrative and in high and and looked sought after. When when I was when I was fired, I mean, they offered me a severance package of sixty four thousand US dollars, which I also turned down as that would have required me to sign a non disparagement agreement. And but I mean. I don't. And I mean, I have savings from my time from my time at Facebook. I, I don't spend a lot. I, I, you, I guess you could technically say that Facebook is financing my whistleblowing, but that would be very misleading. <laughs> I don't think anyone would say that that Facebook in a way has sponsored uh, you speaking out against uh, them. But you know, thank you, thank you so much, Sophie, for uh, taking out the time, and uh, more than that, thank you so much for speaking up. Uh, I think a lot of what we do know about platform is courtesy people who have worked there who still care deeply about how these platforms impact our society and our democratic institutions. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm sure like uh, a lot of people who work within the tech industry look up to uh, people like you, Francis Hogan, and anyone else who will come after you guys. Uh, so th thanks again. Thanks a lot for doing this. Absolutely. Thank you and have a good day. The subscription model is something that keeps news on your float, but we need hundreds of thousands of people to completely transform the news ecosystem. So you pay for news, so it serves you. So click on the link with this video, subscribe to News Laundry and pay to keep news free. And say, Mere par azad hai khabrein.